give us direction from above. We need a word from the Lord. A word from the Lord. But by in it and allow our iniquities to lead us astray. Well, well. You see, many times people wonder why is it that God Us. You see, the only thing that really tests us is our own iniquities, what we really want to do. And we see what we really want to do and we buy the bait like a fish with a hook and we're caught up. The Bible says here that for your iniquities teaches your mouth. Oh, that is deep. Your iniquities teaches your mouth. No, your iniquities are not supposed to teach your mouth. The Word of God is supposed to teach your mouth. That's why God says to meditate on it day and night so that you would be careful to do everything written in it. So that you would be careful to do everything that is written in it. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen? amen. So if we want to overcome this hindrance to meditation, we've got to get some new teaching. And we have to obey the word fully. Not halfly. That's what right. uh, you say, you see, and that's what that's called a lukewarm Christian. When you're doing something halfway, that's lukewarm, and God hates lukewarm. He said, I, I'd rather you be hot or cold. I spill you out right. Amen. of the same mouth. So, it's not just new teaching, it's just doing everything that God tells you to do. Mm -hmm. Everything. Without question, without a doubt, you don't have to understand it. You meditate on it day and night, and you do it. Say to your neighbor, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh neighbor. Do everything. Do everything. The word tells you to do. The word tells you to do. Whether you understand it or not. Do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. And that's what meditation does. It really helps you to understand. Because sometimes you, you read a text and you have to stop and you and, 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 and meditation puts you in a slower mode. Amen. And, and sometimes you have to stop in the middle of the text and say, Lord, okay, now what does this truly mean? Or what does it mean to me? Or what is it you want me to do as a result of reading this word? What is it you want me to do? I think Foster mentioned that during the meditation time during this week. To, to, to stop and say, what is it that this word wants me to do? New teaching. Don't let the iniquities of your mouth teach you. Only allow the word of God to teach you and meditate on it day and night so that you'll be careful to do everything written in it. Then from Sunday we learn that that's how we can be prosperous and successful. And many of us want to be prosperous and successful. And this is the way that you become prosperous and successful. So we have to get some new teaching and then we have to get what? Some new talking. Some new talking. Yeah. It says, and you chose the tongue of the craft. You chose the tongue of the crafty. Many times I've talked, tell us where we really are with God. If we see what we're talking the most about. Uh -oh. <laughs> that's what we love the most. People in the world, you hear them talk, and a lot of times they're just talking about money. A lot of times... Men, they talk about women. 
mighty women. Power. Trying to be influential. Or trying to be perceived as being influential. Boasting. Your talk tells you really where you are with the Lord. Because a person that meditates on the Word of God will probably be talking about God all the time. You don't have to tell them people to witness for the Lord. Another thing you don't have to tell them, you don't have to tell them the one, two, threes and the ABCs of evangelism. Because all they'll simply do is talk about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. And it just comes out. You don't have to train them to do it. Is that so full of the Lord that it just automatically comes out? The person in this text, really, who they were trying to accuse Job of being, to which he was vindicated later, right. his friend. Right. But basically, what he said: "You choose the tongue of craftiness." We know what James says about the tongue, and, and James eight five and six it says. Uh, or take the ship as an example, although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are stirred by a very little rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. <clears throat> Likewise, the tongue is a little part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great flame or forest is set on fire by a small spark. Mm -hmm. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil amongst the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the, the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself set. On fire by hell. Ooh. Oh, that's deep, isn't it? Yeah. It's talking about our talk. You choose the tongue of craftiness. There's some folk in our church need, where well, really all of us need to tame our tongues. Amen. 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 All right. Need to tame our talk. Because every time you speak fires are started within our church and it sets our church aflame because you have learned to tame your talk you've got to get some new talk you have to you have to stop choosing the tongue of craftiness and, and choose the tongue of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ choose the tongue of the word of God the old folk used to simply say, if you can't say something good, then don't say nothing at all. Because yeah. <laughs> our tongues, the devil uses to cause a flame. Our tongues, the devil uses to cause trouble and dissension, backbiting and talking about one another. This is a hindrance to meditation. All right. Amen. You, you're too busy talking mess to where you're not meditating and focusing on the Word of God. You're, you're too busy talking to other folk to where you, you, you see the Word will tell you what to do. The Word will tell you what to do. Yeah. We've got to get a new talk this year. Say to your neighbor, neighbor! Baby. Oh, neighbor! Another cock on the sea But what we need is a special word That will burn within our heart And give us direction